I'm a VFX artist, and in this video, I'm gonna create a hologram effect and turn this into this. So, a while ago, I created a hologram effect, and a lot of you, I mean a lot, wanted to have an in-depth tutorial. So here we are, one year later, and in this video I'm going to show you from start to finish how to prepare for the shoot, what camera settings, all the steps from camera tracking, creating the icons, animation, color grade, and also some post-production stuff. The social media icons used will be available on my Patreon, link in the description. So let's begin. Begin by adding tape to the screen. Draw X shapes onto these, make sure to have a high contrast. This will help during the motion tracking process in Blender. Alright, let's start. Time to go outside. Make sure to have a tripod while you're filming because we're only going to use the motion of the phone. And while you're filming, make sure to have the screen in frame throughout the video. Before we go inside, make sure to also capture the surrounding. And uh, if you don't have a 360 camera, a great free alternative is to use Google Street View. In this app, you can take pictures 360 degrees around and then it will stitch together and create a 360 image. This will work as a HDRI and give more realistic shading. Just so you know, it's not a real HDRI, just JPEG, but it works for me. Alright, time to go inside. In Blender, go into the video editing tab and add the video we just shot. Oh, I almost forgot. The reason why we are in the video editing tab is to convert the video to a PNG sequence. Blender's camera tracking works better with an image sequence instead of a video sequence. Here it shows 24 frames per second and time to hit export. Go into the motion tracking section and import the image sequence. Set the scene frames and hit prefetch. This will load the video and store it into the cache to give it more fluid playback. To manually add tracking points, press Ctrl left mouse and make sure to choose Affine in the settings. To track forward, press Ctrl T and if the track stops, you can just manually track and continue throughout the whole video. As you can see, before we can solve the camera motion, we need to have more than 8 tracking points throughout the video. This is the reason why we added so many tracking points onto the screen. So let's add the rest. Here, we can see my thumb is covering one of the tracking points, so you can just pause it, and when it's cleared, you can just continue it. When we have 8 tracking points, and we hit solve, we usually get a really high number to begin with. To fix this, we can just tweak some of the tracking points, and we can also try and check the tripod, or adjust the sensor size and the focal length. Our goal is to get an error below 1. When we're happy, set up the tracking scene and also select three points. These will determine where the ground will be, aka the screen or the phone. As you can see, this technique is quite strange because the phone itself is static while the camera is moving. But I found this technique to be quite easy to work with. Scale down the plane and also hit apply scale and location. This will help when you're beveling the edges. Here you can see that the phone is really stretched, but from the camera's perspective, it looks good. And here I'm extruding the edges into planes, and I'll explain shortly why I'm doing this. Time to add some materials. First add a material that's going to be the phone screen, and then you're going to add a material and name it Holdout. Assign the middle part to the phone screen material, and then the rest to the Holdout. So, go into the shading tab, and for the phone screen, we're gonna add a glass shader. As you can see, nothing is happening when we're looking into the render view. And the reason is because we're still in the background folder. So, remove the phone screen from this folder. Go into the compositing tab, and remove all the nodes that we aren't gonna use. And we're only gonna use one of the render layers. 
I realized that all the points wasn't aligned, so I zeroed out their Z location to get them perfectly flat. And here's the reason why I added the brim around the screen. When we're adding depth to the phone, we're gonna see the edges of the inside when the phone is angled. So we need to have some sort of mask that is blocking these sides. And these planes around the screen with a holdout shader works exactly as a mask. And the holdout creates an alpha channel that removes everything beneath it. I also decided to create a separate object as the glass screen, and I also added a solidify modifier to it. Then I imported the social media icons, and you can find these on my Patreon page. And I angled them so they looked right from the camera's perspective. The rest of the details of the phone was really simple. It was just simple shapes such as cubes that I beveled down. A good idea is to use Google references from Android phones. And for all these shapes, I also added solidify modifiers to them to give some depth. And this step is up to you. You decide how many details you want to add to the phone. To create some movement, I added some simple keyframes when I'm interacting with an Instagram icon, and also when all the icons appear on the screen. The Instagram feed that appears after I press the icon was made in DaVinci Resolve. And to achieve this effect, I just took simple screenshots from my feed and then imported them and turned them into a continuous feed in the Fusion tab. And then by using one transform node, I keyframed them and tried to match the movement of my thumb in the video. When that was done, I exported the video as MP4 file and imported it into Blender. Here, I added simple planes and beveled down the edges to get a more aesthetic look. And to apply the video as a texture, you import the video, you add the video by pressing Ctrl T, and this is a shortcut by using the Node Wrangler add-on. You can activate it up in the preferences. And make sure to check the refresh button on the image texture node. And also specify the amount of frames and when the video is gonna start playing. Now it's time to add our custom HDRI, and I exported it from Google Street View and then mailed it over so I could download it on my computer. To create some more realism in the glass shader, I added a translucent shader and also control where the parts of the screen would be translucent by adding a surface imperfection image. And this is from Clinton Jones or Punisher's surface imperfection pack. And I'm also controlling the mount with a color ramp node. When I exported the video, I made sure that I had alpha channel activated and I exported using 1080p 24fps and I also used OpenEXR and using a DWAA lossy format and this format is better than PNG because you keep all the light information at the same time as you keep the file size minimal. And this workflow is explained really well by Polyfjord and you can check his video by clicking the link up in the corner. Then in DaVinci Resolve I added all the layers and to isolate the thumb over the screen I used a simple color picker in the color grade tab and to create a clean mask I also added an animated mask around the thumb to remove unnecessary noise. And to create the pairing phone I stitched together one shot where I put up the hand and faked the motion where I summoned the phone and then I masked it over the other one where I placed a phone in my palm and then used a simple jump cut. And for the color grade I used some simple color boost and I also added some soft glow and for the final step I added some noise to remove some banding because this was shot with 8-bit footage. And there we go! I hope you enjoyed this video and as usual I'll see you soon. Bye!